Ration. Clara peels the potatoes. She had her hair cut very short, so when she worked the land, the teary locks did not blight the grass. Bad luck for the crops, concluded father, one afternoon as he watched the news bulletin. He switched the television off and put the lights on. He measured the length of each eyelash and declared that Yes, indeed, they did stop us understand the real life. Nobody could disagree with a scientific discovery. Father took the scissors out of the cupboard and laughed at me as he dropped Clara's plaits on the living room carpet. My black plaits never grew after that. The hair developed inside my lungs. At night, I spat the growing particles out and hid them under the floorboards. Father believed that the news were true. We all had to believe in something certain, which can be seen with the naked eye, in real things, he believed, like the soiled potatoes spread on the dinner table. On Thursdays, we peel the potatoes, kneeling in silence by the water pipes. Father sits on a stool to watch my weekly exercise of admiration. He checks the pills stained with droplets of blood and laughs again. My bald head tilted above the sink looks at Clara. My hair comes out of my mouth, out of my chopped fingers, floats in the air to cover her skull. Birthday present. The day Clara was eight, we decided to spend the night in the doll's house. I put a biscuit inside my pocket, quietly unlocked the front door and went in, bare feet. We sat on the windowsill, watching the imaginary sea in front of us, naked creatures, when I thought to hold Clara's hand in case she jumped in for a swim. At that time, Clara did not know the difference between the crude reality and dreams. Mother said she was stupid as she swallowed the chewing gum and was afraid of cotton wool. I wasn't afraid of anything but did not know what to do if she cracked her head open in the middle of the night on the stone flooring. Look at the waves, she screamed. How soft. The sky, tall, my back sunburned. I watched how she clapped her hands, took the biscuit out of my coat and gave it to her. Clara broke it in very small pieces and ate her half. It's wonderful, she screamed again. The taste of crumbs in the wind. She smiled at last and squeezed my fingers. In the white box, Clara and I played with clay birds and mud. Her night dress caught in brambles, her legs frozen. My leg cut and bruised, but I smiled back. At dawn, we got up and left before it started to rain. Family photograph no, no, I shouted. The fish tank will stay in my room. The golden, dead creature floating on the green water had my mother's face before she went away. I like to keep everything neatly in the same place where she left them, undisturbed by the melting sun. The dust shined on the glass lid on the doll's eye on my forehead each night when asleep in the hallway. I sat down on the cracked lino, covered my arms with leaves and kept watching Clara tidying, tidying the house. Her yellow fingers piled everything in a black bag. She left the fish alone with a sigh. Looking at the moves up and down the stairs, I thought she looked a bit like a one-winged butterfly, unable to jump 
out through the shut window. I wondered what butterfly meat tasted like if sliced with a silver blade. What mother tasted like in the moment I was released, honey-coated pearl. I put my elbow close to my lips and smelled to see if she was somehow hiding in there. Clara tripped over my spread legs but kept singing. She did not look ahead. I looked ahead at each room with a serious face. My empty baby skin rested on top of the rubbish bin.